It's time for Life Point Kids. Stand to your feet and sing. Hi everyone, welcome to LifePoint Kids. We are so glad that you're here today. If this is your first time with us or if you've been here lots and lots and lots and lots of times before, we're really happy that you're here. This is our second installment of our series, Ouch. Today we're gonna to be learning about an eight year old king that made a very wise and bold decision. Yes, I said, that's right, I said eight years old. He was only eight years old, but you'll have to wait a little bit before you hear about that. First, let's talk about LifePoint Kids being online. We started recording LifePoint Kids about three years ago because we couldn't come to church. And um, we're continuing to record now because it gives us a chance to reach people who live far away and who can't come to church here because of that. Well, it also makes it possible for you to watch LifePoint Kids any time that you miss coming to church on a Sunday. So, you know, that way you get to hear the important word that we believe God has for you. It, it works out great for everybody. So, let's get started by going to Jesus in prayer and ask him to bless our time together today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we get to come to church today and, and hear your word. We thank you that we get to spend time with our friends. We thank you that we get to worship you. We thank you that we get to hear your word. And uh, Lord, we thank you that we, we get to fellowship. So Lord, we ask you to help us have a great day today. Help us to learn the word that you have. So we ask that you open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds to receive your word. We ask this in Jesus' name because we love you and we want to serve you. Amen. Hey kids, we are continuing our series called Ouch. It's all about some really powerful truths Jesus taught when he preached the Sermon on Mount. Jesus said some things that made his followers say, ouch. They knew what Jesus said was so true, and they thought about how they were living compared to how Jesus said they should be. It stung a little. It hurt them to see how far off they were from how Jesus said they should be living. Today, we're learning about another one of those lessons Jesus taught. So let's check in with our host from the series, Band Dave.
Thanks, bros and brosettes, for that totally awesome welcome. I'm Band-Aid, and this is my show, Ouch. Every week, I spend hours hunting for the best pet fail videos out there. So why don't we get started right now? Get it? Meow. Now. Anyway, any of you out there have a pet, like a cat or a dog? When I was a young Band-Aid, I used to go over to Grand's house sometimes, and it would rain. She would say it was raining cats and dogs. But like, you know, it was just water. Maybe even wonder if Gran knew what a cat was. So yeah, well, let's get into our extreme pet fail video of the week. This video catches some pets doing some stuff that they shouldn't. Let's take a look. were tempted to do all kinds of stuff to get themselves into trouble. Temptation is a tough thing. You know what? This morning I was tempted to get some of the fresh baked cookies that my granny made. She told me to wait until after dinner. But I just can't. Let's go over there right now. Here we are in Grandaid's kitchen and those are her famous cookies. Now I must not give in to temptation to eat them. So let's go ahead and get into today's stunt for the cookie. No, 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 no. Let's get in and do the stunt for the chocolate chip. Oh no, I mean, that is what I mean. I'm gonna eat that cookie. You know, I heard somewhere that a doctor said that a cookie a day keeps the boo-boos away. So let's go ahead and eat one. Oh great, my hand's stuck. All right, well, don't panic. Man, you've been in this situation seven times before. Remember the safety protocol. Safety protocol, what was it? Oh great, I didn't write it down. I was too busy napping. I got an idea. I heard one time in the Bible it said that if your right hand causes you sin, to just cut it off. So I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do. Man, what are you doing with my butter knife? This is your butter knife? Grand Age, you are extreme. Here, let me help you. Are you holding on to the cookies? Well, yeah. Well, that's why your hand is stuck. You're making a fist. Let go of the cookies. Is there any other way to get my hand? Let go. You know what? I think I'd rather do the Bible thing and just cut my hand off. That is not what the scripture says. The Bible doesn't actually want you to cut your hand off. Jesus is saying, do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. The kids are going to learn all about that in their lesson today. Ah, okay. Let go of the cookie. Okay. Now, you think you can make me a snack? It's kind of been a rough day. Sure. Grab my butter knife and I'll make you some toast. Huh. So what do you use for steak? Chainsaw. <gasps> Let's hear it for Band-Aid and his Grand-Aid. Today, we're going to learn about one of those extreme statements Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. He said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Cut it off? Really? That sounds painful, doesn't it? How many of you would say that it's not something you would look forward to doing every time you fall into sin? Me neither. Well, the good thing is, Jesus doesn't mean every time you sin, you actually cut off a body part. What he did mean was that we need to be willing to do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. You're going to learn all about what it means to go to the extreme links to stay away from sin in your lesson today. But first, we need to check in with Skittles and what's find out what's up. What's up? 
Oh yeah! What's up everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T-L-E-S. Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about how to stay away from sin. So, every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Ooh, mommy, I need help. Can you give me a hand? No, man, Jesus didn't mean we gotta literally cut off the pieces of our body that are involved in sin. No, no, no. What he did mean is that we gotta be willing to do whatever it takes to keep ourselves from falling into sin. We gotta do whatever it takes, baby. So every time somebody asks you, What's up? You tell them. I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. That right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior. Skittles out. Bang, bang. Yeah. Thanks, rainbow of flavor who's living for a savior. As you just heard, today's what's up is I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. So, Every time someone here says, what's up, stand to your feet and shout, I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. So let's practice. What's up? I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. Let's do it again. What's up? I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. Wow, that was absolutely wunderbar. That's German for wonderful. And that's today's What's Up. It's time to join Aaliyah and Emma singing praises to Jesus.
Today's Bible story is found in 2 Kings chapters 21 through 23. God's people, the Israelites, had received specific instructions from God that they were to worship Him and only Him. But they didn't listen or obey very well. They allowed other people to convince them to sin and worship false gods. This went on for several years. It broke God's heart. His people were worshiping idols. They were even worshiping these false gods right there in the temple sanctuary. The temple was supposed to be dedicated to God, but the Israelites turned it into a place for idols. All of this changed one day when an eight-year-old boy named Josiah became the new king. That's right, Josiah was eight when he was crowned the new king. How many of you are eight years old? Can you imagine being a king right now? Josiah began to read the Holy Scriptures and he found where God had declared that Israel should worship Him only. Josiah knew that worshiping these false idols was wrong. He didn't want to fall into temptation to sin by worshiping anything other than the one true God. So, Josiah made a declaration for the entire country. He said, from now on, Israel will worship the Lord. Then, he did something that would make sure that nobody would worship these idols anymore. He commanded the priest to go to the temple and tear down every single idol of the false gods. That's exactly what they did. The priest tore every single idol down to the ground. Talk about an extreme measure to make sure somebody didn't sin. Josiah decided to cut down every single idol. He was determined to do whatever it took to stay away from the sin of idol worship. In your lesson today, you are going to learn that you need to have the same attitude that Josiah had. You need to be willing to do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. Listen closely, it could change your life. What's up? I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. It's me again, Boo Boo. And yes, I'm at the noises office, Hoyt, again. Today I accidentally inhaled the class pet. You've heard of having butterflies in your stomach? Well, I have a hamster stuck in my stomach. I haven't felt him move in a little while. Hopefully he's taking a nap. Oh, oh, no, no, there he is, there he is. Calm down, Mr. Squiggles, calm down. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, anyway, I've been here all morning at the Noises office because Jimmy Valentine saw what I did and he tried to eat a hamster just to get out of the test, but instead I got stuck up his nose. <laughs> I was half voice noise Higginbottom. <laughs> Anywho, I've been going over power voices in my head just to pass the time. You want to hear today's power voice? Okay, today's power voice says, Stay away from every kind of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 That's a good power verse. Yeah, it is. Now we need the Goyles to stand up. Come on, Goyles, stand up. Oh, not too fast. Oh, you're gonna make me nauseous. Oh, oh, oh. I'm better now. Okay, girls, it's time to say it on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Stay away from every kind of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22. Good job, girls, good job. Well, actually, it was, it was pretty good. Don't, don't get cocky. I think the boys can do it better. All right, girls, sit down. Boys, stand up and say it with me. Boo boo on the count of three. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Stay away from every kind of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 Good job, good job. Well, it wasn't perfect, but it was good. Sit down, sit down. You know, boys and girls, 
Today's power verse kind of reminds me of our buddy Jimmy Valentine over there. Yeah, I'm talking about you with the rodent all up in your sinuses. Ridiculous. You know, boys and girls, sometimes we think it will be a good idea to do a bad thing. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says it's better to just not do it. It's better to just run away. To just cut your losses and go. Instead of just doing that bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you end up with, you know, hamster face over there. Yes, I'm talking about you. Don't look at me that way. Goodness. Anyway, now I need everybody's help. Boys and girls, stand up with me, Boo Boo, on the count of three. Ready? One, two, not you. Three. Stay away from every kind of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22. Good job, boys and girls. Good job. You can have a seat. Good job. What? Was that noise taken bottom? It's my toy? Oh, finally. Oh, I'll see you later, boys and girls. My name's Boo Boo. You stay safe out there. I'm coming, noise taken bottom. Oh, I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. I'm nauseous. What's up? I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. Have you ever wanted something so bad that you were willing to do anything to get it? You know, maybe it was the latest toy that was just so cool you were willing to do whatever it takes to get it. You know, you'd pay any price, do any chore, and wait in any length of line just to be able to get it. Have you ever felt that way? Well, how many of you ever seen those people you know, that camp out and wait in line just to get the latest phone or electronic gadget? Well, those people definitely have the whatever it takes attitude. And it's amazing to watch. I have a question. How many of you would like to have one of these? You know, it'd probably make it really easy, easier for you to get that toy, huh? Well, who wants this? I do, I do, me, me, I do, I do. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to get this? Yeah. 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 Wow, a lot of you definitely have some extreme excitement for this $100 bill. And you really do seem to be willing to do whatever it takes to get it. I can appreciate that. But I have another big question for you. Do you have the same whatever it takes attitude when it comes to keeping sin out of your life? Are you willing to go to the extreme lengths to keep away from sin? Well, we're studying part of the Sermon on the Mount today where Jesus clearly taught that each of us should have a whatever it takes attitude when it comes to keeping sin out of our lives. In Matthew 5, 29, Jesus said, and if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. Whoa, Jesus really said that, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, he did. Well, but Jesus didn't really mean it that that you were supposed to cut off your hand if we sin, did he? No, I don't think he did. It, it's, you know, it's no wonder that they, they called this series, Ouch. Well, let me clear, be clear with this, okay? No, 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 no. I want you to repeat after me. All right, say, or actually, say this with me. Jesus, Jesus didn't mean we literally had to cut, cut off our hand. hand. Okay, that was good. Say it again. Jesus didn't mean we literally had to cut off our, our hand. hand. All right, now I want to make sure you've got this, okay? Because I don't want anybody cutting off their hands, all right? Jesus, Jesus didn't mean we literally had to cut, cut off our hand. hand. We know this because there's no record in the Bible of the disciples cutting off people's hands. Instead, though, Jesus made these extreme statements to challenge his followers and us to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep sin out of our lives. Why? Well, it's because sin has a high price. The Bible is clear that each of us are guilty of sin. Every one of us, we're all guilty of sin. If we were in the courtroom of life, we would have no choice 
but to plead guilty. You see, Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned. That means you, that means me, that means everybody in the sanctuary, that means everyone. Every one of us is guilty of sin. We've all sinned. And it only takes being guilty of one sin to deserve separation from Jesus forever. That is such a huge price. One sin, just one sin. And the price is that you won't get to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. Not good, huh? Not good at all. That's why Jesus was so serious about staying away from sin. See, sin will destroy you. And sadly, many people don't understand that. They think, oh, come on, a little sin never hurt anybody. You know, I mean, if it's, it's no big deal if I steal this one piece of candy from the store. Or it's not that bad if I tell only this one lie. Or it's okay if I cheat on this one test. Well, that's not true. One, one sin will hurt you. That's why Jesus was so extreme in his statement from the Sermon on the Mount. He said, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Be willing to do whatever it takes to stay away from sin, but do not cut off your hand. Okay, don't cut off your hand. So one way to make sure you stay away from sin is don't try to see how close you can get to sin without sinning. You see, too many kids hang around the wrong crowd. They choose friends who lead them down the wrong path. They aren't sinning themselves, at least not yet, but they're hanging around people who lie, people who cheat, steal, cuss, and even more stuff than that. Instead of hanging around people who are tempting you to sin, choose to be around people who will help you get closer to God. Even more than that, do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. You have to have an extreme attitude against sin. It will destroy you. So be willing to do whatever it takes, whatever it takes to stay away from sin. Jesus said, if your right hand causes you sin, cut it off. And that's extreme, all right. But you don't need to cut off your hand. Instead, some of you need to cut some of the other things out of your life. Like this. You, know, you need to cut out lying, or you need to cut out bad attitudes, or movies that you watch that you aren't supposed to be watching. And because and, they aren't helping you be more like Jesus at all. You need to cut those attitudes and those bad sins. You need to cut those things out of your life. Yeah. Disobeying your parents, cut it out of your life. Bad music, cut it out of your life. Bad language, lying, and, and bad movies, cut it out of your life. Do whatever it takes. Choose to do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. The great news is that you don't have to do it on your own. Jesus will forgive you and help you stay away from sin. He can do that today. Why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you can help us to stay away from sin, that you can help us to not sin. We don't want to commit that even that one sin. And we thank you that you are the way to do that. You're the way to help us do that, Lord. And we, we thank you that you forgive us of our sins when we do sin. We thank you that you died on the cross so that we don't have to pay the price for our sins. Lord, so we ask you to help us to do these things. And Lord, I pray right now that you'll touch anyone who's listening's heart that does not know you today. Lord, I pray that you'll ask them or you'll, 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 Touch them and reveal yourself to them and let them know that you are real and you are the God, you are the Son of God, that you can forgive them of their sins, Lord. We ask you to help us with this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, have you accepted Jesus in your heart? Have you ever made him Lord of your life? Well, it's really simple to do, but it's really important to do. As simple as it is, it's something that you absolutely have to do if you expect to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. And it's real simple. All you have to do is admit that Jesus is the Son of God. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Confess your sins to Him. Believe in Him. Believe that He is God's Son and that He will forgive your sins. 
Believe that he died on the cross for your sin. Real simple steps. And, and if you need help with this, you can ask your mom and dad. You can ask your grandparents. You can ask your brother or sister. You can contact us here at the church. We will be glad to walk you th through the steps of salvation. We know how important it is for you to accept Jesus in your heart. So if you want to do this, give us a call. Talk to your parents. I promise you it will be the most exciting and the best thing that you ever do. Hey, 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 hey! What's up? I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. <laughs> Brain it's time to drain our brains. Let's dig deep into our memories and see what you remember from today's lesson. Question one, what's up today? Stay away from sin. I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin or do what it takes to keep sinning. If you said, I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin, you're correct. Question number two. Who was our Bible story about? Jeremiah, David, or Josiah? If you said Josiah, you're correct. Question number three. What were the Israelites doing in the Bible story? Worshipping idols, dancing, or worshipping God? If you said worshipping idol, you got it correct. Number four, true or false, Josiah was an old man when he became a king. If you said false, you're correct. Question number five, what happened to the idols? They stayed there, they were moved, or they were torn down? If you said they were torn down, you're correct. Number six, true or false, we don't have to stay away from sin. If you said false, you're correct. Now, the next three questions begin with, according to our lesson today. Any number of the answers could be right, but I'm looking for the answer that has to do with today's lesson. Alrighty? Number seven, according to our lesson today, sin has a high cost, sin has a high payment, or sin has a high price. If you said sin has a high price, you're correct. Question number eight. According to our lesson today, don't try to see how close you can get to sin without sinning. Don't try to see how far you can get to sin without sinning. Or don't try to see how near you can get to sin without sinning. If you said, don't try to see how close you can get to sin without sinning, you're correct. Question number nine. According to our lesson today, do whatever it takes to stay away from God. Do whatever it takes to stay away from sin or do whatever it takes to stay away from balloons. If you said do whatever it takes to stay away from sin, you're correct. Final question, where was our power verse found? 2 Timothy 4.12 or 1 Thessalonians 5.22? If you said 1 Thessalonians 5.22, you're correct. Well, how did you do? Did you get them all right? Or most of them? Well, great job. Game on! It's game on, and I'm up here with Emma and Aaliyah. We're going to be playing Cup Snack Game today, and we have a special guest judge. We have Roxy here today. Roxy is going to judge to see who's the winner. She's going to make sure that they don't cheat. You guys don't cheat, do you? No, no, especially after today's lesson, you aren't going to cheat. I know that. All right, so uh, what you're going to do is when I say go, you are going to stack your cups up, and then you're going to unstack them. And the first one completed with having their cups back in a stack just like you have now will be the winner. Okay, so are you ready? Yes. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you positive you're sure you're ready? Yes. Are you surely positive that you're ready? Yes. On your mark, get set, go! And we have a winner! Emma, you were the winner! Right? That's what Roxy told me. Roxy said, Roxy, is, is she the winner? 
Yes, she's the winner. All right, so Emma, if you'll grab the bucket, we'll go ahead and um, let's see about drawing a name out of there for our virtual player. All right, who you got there? I got two. Oh, cool. Oh, no, I didn't. Nope, you got one. And you got Harrison Jones. Harrison, you are our virtual player today. If you contact us or if you're here today, let me know. You will get a $5 Walmart gift card. All right. Good job, ladies. Good job. And good job, Roxy. Roxy, say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everybody. I will do whatever it takes to stay away from sin. I'm so glad you're here at LifePoint Kids today. I hope you enjoyed the service and learned how much Jesus loves you because he loves you so much. Let's pray and ask him to help us with what we learned. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for what we learned today about getting the sin out of our lives, Lord, and keeping the sin out of our lives, Lord. It's so important that we do that. We want to please you and make you happy. Lord, we pray that you help us to pass this news on to our friends too. Help us to be brave enough to tell the people that we know, our friends, our family, our relatives, uh, that, that you died on the cross for their sins and that you will forgive their sins too, Lord. We ask you to help us to share that good news. Lord, we ask you to help, us, help keep us safe this week and, uh, and help us have a great week. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Now remember that this Tuesday at 318 Kids, we'll be doing some fun activities as we do the deep dive into today's lesson. That'll be here at Life Point on Tuesday night at seven o'clock, and we hope to see you there. If not, we'll see you next week at Life Point Kids, where we're learning to live for Jesus every day.